as parents, what are you hoping to get out of parenting or what are you hoping for your children? Sometimes the answer is as simple as I want to, I want them to be uh, happy. I want to have positive effects on them. I want them to uh, have a good bond with us. And all these things are really important and the most important things to focus on. When I never ask this question and here I want them to have good grades or I want them to uh, be polite. I always hear big hopes like about their values and about their uh, well-being and this is what we're going to focus on today the mental and psychological well-being of children with the fast-paced life the pressures from school and education and the financial problems and uh, um, the stress of work sometimes we focus on the day-to-day -day challenges and what's needed from us and how to fix the problem that is happening right now but this is a reminder to stop and take um, a moment to think of beyond the day-to-day -day things, what are we hoping uh, to do for our children? Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, first we're going to talk about the emotional and psychological needs of children from the very young age. Children have a need to be um, seen. They want you to see them as they are. If you don't see them, they're going to make whatever it takes for you to see them and notice them. Sometimes they find that it's easier to do this by doing the wrong thing because for them, you just noticing them, you're very important. Being uh, my mother or father, this is when I, at a young age, this is the most important person for me. Even at older ages, if they stop showing it, it's because it's been very hard to try to get your approval for so long. I'm sure even you, the ones who are listening to me now, if you're already parents in your 30s or 40s or 20s or 50s, you still feel good when you hear a good word from your parents. You still, when you do something good, you want your parents to know whether they're alive or not anymore. Um, we want just to, to focus on um, the idea that my kid wants me to see them, to see them the way they are, to accept them. They also need to feel heard. I want to feel that someone listens to me, someone understands me, someone knows how I'm feeling. When I complain about something, they get to understand what I'm going through. It's not very hard. When we work with teenagers, this is usually the first thing they complain about when they talk about their parents. They don't get me. They don't understand anything. One of the main reasons about this because when, we, when they talk about something that is important to them, we sometimes can see why this is a big deal. We think about it from our point of view. So it's not adding up for us why they're making a big deal out of it. So we need to learn to put ourselves in their shoes, to show them empathy, to try to understand that, help them understand that if it's important to them, then it's important to us as well. So they need to feel seen, heard, accepted, loved unconditionally. I need to know that at this place, in this family, at this home, there is someone who loves me and accepts me, accepts me as we've said, mentioned many times before, for who I am under any conditions, even at my worst times, because this is the time I need love the most when I'm uh, feel bad when I feel bad about myself, when I'm when I'm guilty, when I feel that I've done something wrong. I need to feel loved and accept loved and accepted, so I'd be able to act better, to learn, to fix my mistake, to learn from it. Uh, I also need, and there's a big difference between loving someone and showing them your love. So I'm sure that every single person uh, loves their loves their kids more than anything. But are we showing this enough? Are we showing this in different ways? Are we showing it at the different times? Or where it has some specific conditions like we were saying before, like when they're being good or when they're getting good grades or when they're listening to what we're saying. We need to make them feel assured that it's at all times. Another very important need is connection. I need to have human connection. I need someone to talk to, to share things with, to um, listen to me, to play with. Usually when they, have, when they want to connect, especially at the young age, they just say, come play with me. We're usually busy. We have chores at the house to be done. We have work to do. We need to do things for the younger siblings. But it's very important to remember that connecting with them and doing having quality time with them is very important for their for our relationship and for their development. I know that sometimes it's very hard, but it's a good idea to try to spend uh, some time with each child alone, even if it's just half an hour a week. 
if we can do more to get them to know them, to know what they're going through, to connect with them on a different level. And again, connection is something that they will always look for. And sometimes the pattern of connection that we're used to is fighting. So sometimes they know that it's easier to connect with you by fighting than by any other things. So they would, when they really want the connection or they're bored or they want to get your attention or they just want to connect with you in any way, they would come and do the exact thing that they know would drive you crazy because they just need this connection. And unfortunately, the pattern has become that this is the way we connect. We connect, we just fight. So we need to make sure that we're making room for positive connection so we don't have to uh, let them look for the negative ways to connect with us. Um, another important um, need from our children is how we see them because as we've mentioned, a big part of how they see themselves is based on how we see them. So are we giving them affirmations? Are we giving them validation? Are we acknowledging their effort? Are we helping them see good things in themselves that they might have missed? Are we talking about how helpful they are, how talented they are, how um, thoughtful they are? Are we mentioning when they have picked up uh, something from the floor when they've helped someone when they were made things easy sometimes it's much we 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 forget about the the good things or when they're just sitting down doing the right thing we say just leave them it's good that they're just doing the right thing while actually this is the most important time for us to comment on what they're doing to give them the attention to the positive behavior that they are showing Another very important part of their mental well-being is how we help them deal with their feelings are we equipping them uh, with strategies, positive coping strategies when they feel anxious? Are we helping them to breathe and calm down and slow down and accept that they're worried and know how to deal with this worry or not? Are we teaching them anger management skills or are we just blaming them for being angry? Are we allowing them to accept whatever they're feeling? Like when they say that I'm upset, do we tell them I understand or is our response sometimes there's nothing to be upset about so by the time they stop listening to their to their own feelings they don't trust it so it's very important to help them trust and listen to their own feelings and accept it um, the last uh, the need I'm gonna talk about is the right to say no I know this might be a strange idea for us as parents, but, some, but I'm sure if you remember when they were younger and starting to talk, many kids start saying no before any other words and they say it over and over. It's because it feels good to have a voice. It feels good to um, say that I don't want something. And I'm not saying that this means that I'm going to allow them to break my rules or our family rules without any consequences. I'm saying that they need to have some space where they get to choose, where they get to um, choose what very simple things like from from the very first years what they eat what they wear how they play um, and as they grow they need to have more space for decision making we also encourage parents to pick their battles if you fight about everything and everything becomes a, a power struggle we're going to be fighting all the time so choose what's important know your values and what are the things that you're very want to be very firm and clear about and what are the things that you're willing to compromise so they you help them to compromise as well uh, and the last thing if you allow them to make some decisions and make some choices please be respectful to these choices don't put them down when they get it wrong don't tell them I knew you wouldn't make the right decision on the contrary I'm happy that you tried I love that you take risks sometimes I'm happy that you made a decision you're still learning to decide on your own so always encourage always focus on the positive always help them see uh, what they can do and what they're capable of. Your words mean a lot to them. Assalamu alaikum.